An Ogryn in a Pony's World Written by an Odd Hermit Chapter 2 Ogryn Meet Pony Pony Meet Ogryn Luck had been snoozing peacefully until midday, the sun now high in the sky as he dozed atop the grassy hill. Luck was dreaming of the average Ogryn dream of being showered in accolades by his commissar, and then set off the battle to achieve an overwhelming victory. As always, it was finished off with a great feast with all of his family, excluding his papa. He didn't like his papa, but it was a good dream, a great one even, and that made it all the more irritating to wake up from. He had awoken from being poked at, soft jabs striking several areas of his body. He was still quite groggy, but didn't want to startle whatever was poking him, in case it was big and mean. Well, he was also big and mean, though he's only mean to people who hurt his friends, and when his hearing finally started working again, he could hear three distinct voices whispering to each other. I don't think we should be here, girls. My sister always warned me about letting sleeping dogs lie, said one of the voices, seeming rather unsure and young to boot. She had a certain draw to her voice that Lug couldn't quite place. Oh, pony up, Apple Bloom. If this hairless gorilla was dangerous, this cute little bunny rabbit wouldn't be trying to shoo us away, said another, this one sounding rather high-pitched and soft. Lug could feel Daffy racing across his body as a little rabbit tried to ward off the inquisitive voices. It tickled, and Lud had to force down a deep chuckle. Sweetie Belle's got a point. Plus, maybe this, um... Whatever it is can help us get our cutie marks, chirped another voice, carrying a very tomboyish edge to it. Lug figured this was the one doing all the poking and prodding. It was starting to get difficult to hold it in his laughter. Maybe she's the ringleader of the group. Lug had connected the dots and realized that these were children, very curious ones at that. Normally the sight of an ogre would make any smaller creature balk upon seeing his hulking form, giving him a wide berth like he was some wild animal. But these three seemed to be severely lacking in self-preservation instincts, maybe excluding the first one, Apple Bloom, he figured. She seemed to have a decent head on her shoulders. Though the names were odd, he'd been on many tours to a lot of different planets, so he saw quite a few different cultures amongst the settlers of the Imperium. But never before had he heard such an odd naming practice. He was hoping he'd hear the last one's name, so he waited. And lo and behold, patience bears fruit as the first one, Apple Bloom whispered yelled at the tomboyish one. Don't you remember that one time you tried getting your cutie mark in a bear riding scootaloo? He nearly got mauled. Lug found the last one's name quite silly. He didn't know why. He just sounded like a silly name. He prodded got a tad tiresome, so Lug decided that now was a better time than ever to reveal that he was, in fact, awake. His eyes shot open, though he quickly blinked away the burn he got from looking directly into the midday sun. He groaned as he sat up the action itself always a bit cumbersome. As he rubbed the sleep from his eyes, he saw three colorful little ponies, an orange one with a short purple hair, one with a pearly white coat and curly lavender pink mane, and the yellow one that sported a pink bow and her bright red locks. And there was one thing they all had in common. They looked very, very scared. Lug raised a hand, listening a flinch from the shaking fillies, as if expecting him to strike. He slowly opened his mouth to say, Hello which was apparently the worst thing he could have done, because a second after the greeting left his mouth, the three screamed in unison and took off in the other direction. This, of course, sent a hot knife of hurt into his heart. Sure, he was big, maybe a little scary, but he wasn't mean. At least, not towards cute little ponies. Daffy crossed its paws in a cute indignant display, raising its snout high into the air as if to say, Good riddance. Lug quickly got up to follow them. Daffy already on his shoulder as he reached his full height. The ogren took off in a direction that the fillies ran in, his lumbering stride easily covering large swaths of the ground. He reached his hand out desperately, not wanting to be left behind. Please wait! Lug bellowed, causing two of the fillies to simply run even faster. Though what surprised Lug was that the one of them actually stopped. It was the yellow one. She still looked quite frightened, but the desperation in his plea managed to reach past her fear and tug at her heartstrings. As she stared at him, he stopped in pursuit. Uh, uh, hello, little one, he said softly, raising a hand in greeting. He could see the fear slowly ebb away from the filly's features as she tilted her head to the side, her eyes filling with curiosity. Despite this gargantuan size, he didn't seem at all that dangerous. 
After all, he had a very cross-looking rabbit on his shoulder. That certainly helped diminish his intimidation factor. Apple Bloom began slowly moving towards him until she was about six feet away. She too raised her hoof in greeting, trying to mimic Lug's gesture. Ha, 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 howdy. My, my name's Apple Bloom. Who might you be? She asked, unable to keep the shake out of her voice. It broke Lug's heart to see such a cute little critter so scared of him. He needed to amend this. My, uh, my name's Lug. It's, um, pleas, please, ple pleasure to meet you, little Uncle Bloom. He stuttered as he tried to replicate a formal figure of speech his commissar always used when greeting newly met superiors. Apparently the stuttering did wonders, as the yellow filly simply smiled up to him, the previous tension leaving her body. Apple Bloom, say it with me, prompted a new jovial Apple Bloom, to which they both did. Apple Bloom slowly pronounced her name to help Lug pronounce it, watching with growing mirth as the gentle giant tried and succeeded, matching his proud smile with her own. She trotted closer to Lug and gave him a congratulatory pat on the chin, which elicited an even wider smile from the large man. Lug liked this tiny Zeno. Even though Dodd said that Zenos were bad, and his conversation even went so far as to say inferior, Lug didn't care much. As long as they were nice to him and his friends, Lug didn't mind Zenos. Sorry. Um, Apple, uh, Apple Bloom, what are ya? I ain't never seen a Xeno like you before. Nug asked inquisitively, squatting down to scratch her behind the ears. Most creators really liked when he did that, and apparently so did Apple Bloom, as she leaned into the gesture, closing her eyes as she sighed in relaxation. I'm not a Xeno, I'm a pony, she chirped, giggling as Lug's fingers sifted through her mane. The gargantuan man made an old face and nodded, appreciating the clarification. Lug figured that if she says she isn't a Zeno, then she probably isn't one. He was glad he didn't have to worry about Dawn being mean to the little pony, as she was quite nice to him so far. But the thought brought the focus a sobering realization. He was likely never going to see Dawn and his other tiny friends ever again. He stopped petting Apple Bloom and rose up, as his face filled with the meliconic silence. Noticing this, she looked up at Lug, confused. Though as she saw a look on his face in confusion, then shifted in sympathy. Are you alright, Lug? You look mighty sad. She said worriedly, placing a comfort hoof on the man's shin. Apple Bloom's words brought Lug's attention, his glaze over eyes coming back into focus as he looked down at the little concerned filly. Just thinking about my friends, I suppose. I'll probably be never seeing them again. He said woefully as Apple Bloom's ears went flat against her head. She didn't know what his history was, or where he came from, but she could see that he was just like any other pony. Don't you worry, Lug. I can be your first friend here in Equestria, she said, her face brightening at the prospect, and soon enough so did Lug's. He nodded and went to squat back down. You'd be friends with an ogre like me, she nodded rapidly in reply. I think I like that, Apple Bloom, he said happily earning a warm hug from the little filly as she jumped up and latched onto his neck, wrapping her pony arms around him. The gesture startled him. The only person who'd ever hugged him was his big sister, and even then, that was rare. He sat there awkwardly for a few moments as she nuzzled his neck, before hesitantly returning the hug, holding her there with his hands. He could feel another smile forming on his lips as he closed his eyes and simply basked in the friendliness of this little pony. I might as well bring you into town to meet my big sister. It's right through the white whale woods over there yonder, said the little filly, clambering out of his hands and onto his white shoulders and pointing at the woods that he and Daffy had taken cover in when the drop pod blew up. Daffy Windley went on the offensive, however, kicking and punching at Apple Bloom's hoof. She didn't seem too perturbed by it and simply giggled. It tickled more than anything, really. Oh, Daffy, be nice to little Bloom, will you? No need for that, Lug said sternly, plucking the rabbit from his shoulder and holding it in front of his face. Daffy looked crestfallen as he reprimanded them, and Lug's furrowed bro soon softened when he saw how upset the little critter was. He sighed and used a finger to give Daffy a few scratches behind the ears. I know you just protected me, but as my big sister always said, Sharon is Karen, and my big sister never lies, though she don't know, sir. Lug rattled on, Daffy nuzzling into his palm, sufficiently cheered up and now willing to share Lug's shoulder. He set the rabbit back on its preferred spot next to his head, 
Out of the corner of his eye, he could see Daffy and Applebloom shake, hoof and paw. He jerked softly and began walking into the woods Applebloom's friends ran off into. While walking, Applebloom chattered next to his ear, telling him all about the Ponyville and wacky shenanigans she and her friends would often get up to. A few of the stories would elicit quite the belly laugh from the ogren, startling nearby birds as they nested and shaking the leaves with the sheer intensity of it. Lug also exchanged some stories with Applebloom, mostly the life lessons his big sister always drilled into him and that the many planets he visited on duty. He didn't want to tell the little filly about his more excitable exploits, however, as they'd probably be a little bit too gory for some better of her age. Lug stepped onto a rotting log and felt his foot cut clean through it, but he didn't pay it any mind and just kept walking. They had been silent for a little over ten minutes now, simply enjoying the ambience of the forest and the pleasantness of each other's company. Applebloom was stretched out on his shoulder like she was a snack of potatoes when she raised her head to look at him, a question on her tongue. So, Lug, what are you if you don't mind me asking? She inquired innocently. Lug pursed his lips and lifted an eyebrow, the cogs in his brain turning as he remembered the title of his people. I'm what the little one's calling Ogren. And, um, and I'm his, and I'm human, different from other humans, he said, the term dying on his tongue as he gave up the pronouncing it. Sometimes some words were too hard to remember. What are human? asked Applebloom, tilting her head to the side in confusion. Applebloom let out a quiet giggle as she saw the dumb look that washed over across Lug's face, his mind on overdrive. He rubbed his head, really giving it a thought for a moment. He never thought he'd have to explain what a human was. His brows had been furrowed in concentration, shot up as his eyes alightened with an answer. Well, they's like me, much smaller, frimsy limbs and all that, he chuckled. <laughs> Couldn't lift a club for the life of him. <laughs> he patted the hilt of his blunt weapon that was latched to his belt. He loved his club. It was such a simple device. Just swing it at what you want to go down, and down it goes. Easy as. It was Applebloom's turn to scrunch her face up in thought as she tried to picture a creature like Lug, but smaller and with less muscle. She rested what Lug assumed to be on her elbow against her left hoof as she rested her chin on her right hoof. Lug let out an amused snort. Lug lifted a figure to scratch the underside of Applebloom's chin, but paused as something blue and fast crashed into his chest, making him shift a bit backwards. It didn't really hurt much, but just confused the poor ogren. When he looked down, he saw a dazed, sky-blue pony with multicolored hair and wings, the mare looked at him with a magenta eyes that swiftly bore into a look he knew all too well. Fear and hate. He frowned as the pick of the shot up and got in his face, somehow grabbing him by his shirt with her hooves. Let Applebloom go, you, you big gorilla thing, she demanded, her eyes intense as her gaze bored holes in the lugs. For such a small pony, she was sure feisty and mean. Lug didn't like mean people very much. He had half a mind to clobber her, but he knew that they would likely land him in some pretty hot water. Lug furrowed his brow in irritation as it made its way to his eyes, and his mouth opened with a rebuttal. Now you listen here, he began hotly, though soon interrupted as an orange pony burst through the thicket, a stance in a top of hay-colored mane. With lightning speed, expert accuracy, and a fierce expression, she looped a lasso around Lug's neck and yanked on it. A confused look began painting her features when the big ogre didn't budge. Applebloom heaved a sigh next to his ear, and probably hopped off his shoulder, aided by Lug as he caught her mid-jump and gently set her down. The moment she touched the ground, the blue pony slipped away from Lug and scooped the yellow filly up, but quickly dropped her as Applebloom yanked her from her head back and hit the mare's jaw. Would y'all quit it? He's my friend! She yelled, rushing back over to Lug before she could be intercepted by the orange ones hugging his leg. He ain't gonna hurt me or any pony! Daffy squeaked in agreement on Lug's shoulder. The two older ponies giving the little rabbit a surprised look. Lug's heart warmed a bit when he heard Apple Blue and Daffy so passionately defend him, but that warmth was quickly swept away by the blue one's response. We don't know that, Apple Bloom. Just look at it. It looks like it eats ponies for breakfast, said the blue mare, rubbing her jaw where Apple Bloom struck it with her head. Meanwhile, the orange one had been giving the situation a level gaze, her ferocity gone. Now, Apple Bloom, could you introduce us to your new friend here? We might have gone off the wrong hoof, asked the orange one, yaking the blue one down by the tail, promptly forcing her to sit down. The blue one simply crossed her arms and slumped, looking away as she could let at nothing in particular. Taking this as her cue, a bloom let go of Lug's leg and stood between him and the ponies like a mediator. This here's Lug. He's an ogren, and he's right swell fella. 
Just because y'all are older than me don't mean I'm gonna let you bully him. She said heatedly, giving the blue one a short glare. Daffy once again squeaked in agreement, jumping off Lug's shoulder and onto Apple Bloom's head, shaking a clenched paw at the older ponies. Apple Bloom took a breath and sighed, trumping over to Lug and biting a loose part of his pants near his ankle, leading him closer to the orange one. Daffy retreating back to Lug's shoulder. The ogre looked down at the Stetson wearing pony and gave her a small smile, attempting to be amiable. In return, Apple Bloom went to the orange one's side and lifted her hoof. Lug? This is my big sister, Applejack. Applejack, this is Lug. He's my friend. Now shake, she ordered, stamping a hoof. This elicited a chuckle from both Lug and Applejack, and as their eyes met, and they shook hand and hoof. Well, gosh, Lug, I'm terribly sorry about treating you like some kind of monster. So is she, AJ said, nodding to the blue one. Aren't we, Rainbow Dash? The Rainbow Dash in question mumbled something inside in the feet. She got up and gave Lug a begrudging hoof shake. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, she grumbled, not meeting Lug's friendly eyes. Satisfied, Lug entered the interaction and smiled wider. Ain't no problem, pretty little ponies. That's just the natural reaction to seeing a fully grown ogre. I might be big and scary, but I'm not mean. As my big sister always said, an ogre is friends with all the little ones. Well, ain't that just sweet? Despite your, um, size, I think you're gonna fit in if you choose to stick around. Once ponies get used to you, of course. He just said with a chuckle. <laughs> Come on, I'll treat you to some apple fritters to make up for this little tussle. Lug's face brightened with the prospect of food, especially food from a different culture. He'd never had an apple fritter before, but they sounded good. Soon after, they began making their way through the Whitetail Woods once more with Apple Bloom returning to her place on Lug's shoulder, once again draped across it like a bag of spuds. While they walked, Applejack asked Lug a variety of questions about himself, and he answered them as the best he could. So, what do you do for our living, Sugar Cube? That's a nasty piece of work on your belt makes me think you're a mercenary. AJ asked. Lug answered promptly. I'm a soldier for the imp... Imperia... Imper... Imperium's Imperial Army. Or, rather... Um, a was, he said, beginning proudly but ending sadly. Applejack's eyes grew sympathetic. Can I ask what happened? She said gently. Lug nodded and recounted the three ponies in his presence about how he got to this world, and he paused there to give the layman's explanation of a few things when they got confused. When he finished, Applejack looked a tad disturbed. Rainbow Dash gazed at him with fresh eyes full of respect and a bit of awe, and Apple Bloom did nothing but hug his neck. Lug reached up and gave the little filly a few pats in the head. He could tell by the look on Rainbow Dash's face that she wanted to ask about more excitable exploits, but a quick glare from AJ silenced any possible rude questions. For the record, I'm real sorry you had to go through that sugar cube. Say, sweet apple acres could use a big, uh, strong, uh, ogren, was it? Lug nodded and she continued. Yeah, we could use the extra help and hoof on the farm. We'll even raise up a place for you to lay your head. What do you say, Lug? He looked up and thought, though Apple Bloom's pleading certainly helped him come to a decision. Since he was probably going to be living here for a foreseeable future, he might as well put his muscles to good use. He looked back down at Applejack and gave her a friendly smile. All right, then, he replied, prompting Apple Bloom to cheer, waking the sleeping Daffy. The rabbit gave Apple Bloom a few angry squeaks before curling up the crook of Lug's neck next to his ear. The little filly blushed and gave an embarrassed giggle, ears pressed to her head. When the trees got thinner and the bushes became less numerous, Lug could tell they were reaching the end of the peaceful woodlands, and when they did, he was greeted by the sight of a rather quaint-looking town, with more ponies than he could count on his fingers and toes simply milling about. He was a tad worried about how ponies would react to his presence. As they walked through town, many ponies stopped to see what they were doing and staring at the hulking creature. The looks in their eyes were as varied as they were in color. He saw fear, curiosity, and sometimes disgust. None of them went screaming and running for the hills, which Lug figured was because of the ponies on the both sides of him and the filly on his shoulder. Applejack led Lug past a giant hollowed-out tree that was apparently a library, not that Lug cared, as he was very much illiterate and likely wouldn't be able to read this planet's language even if he was literate. Applejack gestured to Rainbow Dash, beckoning her closer, and the blue mare went over to hover beside AJ as the orange pony whispered in her ear, Rainbow Dash saluted with a serious expression and took off, 
Lug didn't pay the interaction any mind as he was too busy taking a wildly laughing apple bloom. A good twenty minutes later, the tickle fight long over, they came upon a large apple orchard and a farmhouse, apple trees stretching off for about as far as one could see. He heard of apples before, but only the nobility could afford them, so maybe Applejack and her family were quite wealthy. But judging by the rickety fences and old-looking equipment, that may not be the case. He figured that apples were simply very plentiful on this planet, so much so that the average pony could purchase them without issue. Applejack sat looked down on a bench that creaked under his weight as she went inside, yelling something to somebody about getting the big pan. While he waited for the fritters to be made, Lug and Apple Bloom played tic-tac-toe to pass the time. Of course, Lug lost very frequently, as the game was made for smart people, and like Don often told him, Lug wasn't very smart. Apple Bloom quickly got tired of winning so terribly frequently and switched games. Lug soon found himself playing patty cake with the little filly, trying his hardest to memorize the movements. His face was scrunched in fierce concentration, eliciting a tirade of giggles from Apple Bloom as she watched his steam rise from his head when he tried to remember the second part that came after putting his hands together. But alas, a game of patty cake was interrupted as AJ returned with a large platter of lumpy brown pastries, fresh from the oven. The smell wafted into Lug's nose as his mouth immediately began to produce a startling amount of saliva, prompting him to wipe his drooling lips frequently as the large pallet of fritters was placed on his lap. AJ watched him with amused smirk as he didn't wait to begin wolfing down the hot fritters down, his eyes lighting up like they'd never before at the heavenly taste. Now, Lug loved food, probably more than the average ogren, so suffice to say it truly meant something when he declared the pastry his new favorite food holding up the last one reverently as if it were made by the emperor himself. He took a small, savoring bites out of it, each one eliciting a groan from the ogren, his taste buds dancing like never before. A single, joyful tear ran down his cheeks as he ate, his eyes closed, and he felt like a child again. Applejack shook her head mirthlessly, her smirk now a wide smile. I don't think my cooking will ever get a better reaction than yours, Lug, considering me flattered, she said with a giggle ending in a cute snort. And an as-if on cue, Rainbow Dash returned. And with company. Apparently she had been sent to retrieve the rest of their friends, which numbered four more, six in total. The new ponies gaped at the silently crying lug with awe, though one of the four quickly broke out of the outstruck trance. She was yellow like Apple Bloom, though it was a shade paler with a flowing pink mane that curled at the end. Oh, the poor dear is crying, she said softly, her voice as gentle as a butterfly. It seemed whatever trance that had taken hold of the others was overwritten by this pony's motherly instincts as she flew over to dab at the ogren's tears with a handkerchief. Lug opened his eyes to see the soft pony cooing and fussing over him, making him smile. She reminded him of Mama. Lug missed his Mama. Applejack said to give a short laugh in response, however. Don't you worry, Fluttershy. He's just complimenting my cooking. Which added in the urge pony an embarrassed look from Fluttershy as she stopped fussing over Lug, making him frown. He was enjoying that, though he was comforted to save at the fact that she decided to sit next to him, looking up at him with a sweet smile that reminded him very much of his mother. Hello, pretty pony lady. My name's Lug. It's real nice to meet you, he said warmly, looking down at the pony by his side, and shocked her for a moment over the revelation that Lug could speak. But after getting over the initial shock, her eyes somewhat softened even further than they already were, and placed a hoof on his arm. Well, aren't you a sweetheart? It's very nice to meet you. My name is Fluttershy. Oh, and you have a little bunny friend. She exclaimed softly as Daffy arose to meet the commotion. Daffy squeaked a few times at Fluttershy, to which she nodded amiably. It's very nice to meet you too, Miss Daffy. Lug raised an eyebrow at that. He didn't know Daffy was a girl. Well, the more you know, he supposed. The rest of Fluttershy's friends looked in shock at how easily Fluttershy was interacting with the Ogren. Rainbow Dash wondered if it was because Lug reminded her of a bear or something. Not wanting to let themselves get outshone by the shyest of the group, the next one to step up was a purple pony, with a horn and fiercely curious eyes that frankly scared Lug. Not that he'd show it, of course. Like his big sister always said, big ogrens don't get scared. And likely don't get scared because of a purple pony. He raised his hand in greeting, and the pony swiftly took down notes on the piece of parchment, muttering to herself as she did so. She reminded him of the scary, robed robot people. Lug didn't like the robot people. Lug looked the Fluttershy for help, and she gave his arm a few pats in response. It's okay, Lug. Twilight can get a bit carried away sometimes, but she's very nice. She said gently, her words assuring him and hearting Lug's resolve. 
Hello, Purple Pony. My name's Lug. And at that, the scribbling only got faster and more furious, the mumbling reaching a new pace. Now Jack had to come over and smack Twilight upside the head to get her out whatever fever she was in. She looked around briefly before looking up at Lug with an embarrassed chuckle, blushing at her ears pressed flat against her head. I, I apologize. My name is Twilight Sparkle. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lug. Would you mind if I ask you some questions? She was interrupted as Rainbow Dash groaned loudly, her hooves covering her eyes. Ah, we're gonna be here forever, she moaned, dropping to the ground. The interrupted Twilight gave Rainbow Dash a stern look before turning back to Lug to continue, only to be interrupted by a certain Pink Pony's giggling. The Pink Pony's head suddenly shot out of the sleeve of Lug's shirt, looking at him with bright blue eyes and a smile. Hi there, my name's Pinkie Pie. You sure have a whole lot of muscle. Like cheese and crackers, Luggy. You must lift a lot of rocks, huh? <laughs> she finished with a giggle. A balloon shrieked in surprise, falling off her place on Lug's shoulder. Lug, on the other hand, looked at her dumbly. How'd she get in there? He wasn't exactly the smartest person in the room, but he knew that wasn't how things worked. He began to laugh at the absurdity of it, causing the big pony to crack up as well. He laughed until his face was red, the big pony falling out of his sleeve as he laughed alongside him which led the Lug laughing even harder. It took a while for Lug and Pinkie Pie to calm down. As he wiped mirthful tears from his eyes, he lifted his other hand in greeting, like he's done more times today than he cared to admit. However, his older sister always insisted that he greet new people properly, or in this case, ponies. It's nice to meet you, Pinkie, he said jovially, ruffling the pink pony's mane. The action elicited another bout of giggles from her. He liked this pony. She was funny and Lug liked funny people. But this next pony, she was a bit strange. As she came up to him, she swished her mane and blinked rapidly. Lug wondered if she was all right in the mind. It is a pleasure to meet you, darling. I am Rarity, the proprietor of Carousel Boutique and Seamstress Extraordinaire. Now she reminded Lug of the nobles that he'd see every now and again, pompous and rich, always talking with big words and flowery speech and Lug didn't understand a word of what Rarity just said. That didn't seem to matter, however, as she started inspecting the outfit he wore. Though it was more like armor than an outfit, as he wore the plated garb of a Bulgrin, minus the mask. Lug didn't like masks. As she peered at the armor, she started looking more and more disgusted. What a terribly brutish design, she mumbled, walking away to stand beside Applejack as if her indirection left a bad taste in her mouth. My dear... If you ever want a set of clothes that would better complement your muscled physique, do come find me. I'm sure I can spare some time to fix this... Uh, fashion disaster. She said, gesturing to the armor he wore. Lug didn't know if he should be offended or not. He simply shrugged as he nibbled on his apple fritter. Twilight once again looked ready to ask him questions, but was shot down unintentionally by AJ stopping her hoofs and addressing the group. Well, y'all, there concludes the introductions. Lug here is going to be working and living here in sweet apple anchors for the time being, and I need to give an old colt a tour before I show him where he'll be sleeping. I appreciate y'all coming on such a short notice, but there's be work to be done, AJ explained, trotting over to Lug to give him a few pats on the knee, which turned her smile from the ogren. Futterside gently nuzzled him. If you ever get hurt or want to say hi, you're always welcome to stop by my cottage. I'm sure Angel Bunny would love to meet you, Daffy. She said, smiling softly, as Lug reached down to scratch behind her ears. After the gentle scratches were dispensed, she hopped off the bench and took off into the air, waving a goodbye as she flew home. Lug watched a little forlorn lonely as she left, wishing she could have stayed. The rest of the ponies followed suit, with Twilight looking a tad dejected. Lug noticed this, however, and didn't want to let her leave on a bad note. He didn't want to think of what his big sister would do if she found out he let a purple pony critter be upset when there was something he could do about it. I, um, Twilight, my favorite food is apple fritters, he said, hoping the information would cheer her up. Her gaze met his and she gave him a gentle, slightly amused smile, taking out her pen and parchment to write it down. She certainly appreciated the ogre's attempt at cheering her up, and with that, she left shaking her head as she chuckled to herself. And now, it was just Lug, AJ, Apple Bloom, and Daffy. The orange mare gave Lug a few more pats on the knee. Come on, big fella. I'll show you where you'll be sleeping. The tour can wait for for tomorrow. Lug probably got up and brushed the crumbs out of his mouth, turning to give this evening sun a steady gaze. It was almost sunset, and that would mark his first day in a new, 
happier world. And Lug couldn't help but smile. There we go. Another fantastic chapter of an all grin in a pony's world, and I hope you guys agree. I'd like to thank my wonderful Patreons. Thank you, my tier one Patreons, Chase the Master, Starlight Blaze, Dine Tiny Equine, Squall Windfeather, Sword Brother and Mordred, Stu Hex, Rain Flicker, and my new Patreon, Dreamless Portal. I appreciate your support, man, and thank you for joining. My tier two Patreons, Captain Blue Shadow, the animated ghost, Solus, HKH4 aka Texture, and of course a large thank you to Silent Titan. I appreciate you guys' support so much and it means a ton to me. Anyways, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.